Bruchem Aboim. The topic today is, uh, I just think, something we all deal with and look for. And the topic is success. And I think the real question, what is success? So, in reality, success is different things to uh, different people. I really think success is really a state of perception. Um, if you think you're a winner, you're a winner. If you think you're successful, then basically you're successful. Now, there are situations where someone may argue with it, but it's really an attitude. Um, and not only that, success brings on more success. Uh, if you're a person who believes that you're failing, generally life works kind of in a role. Uh, Pirkei Alvo says that one mitzvah brings on another mitzvah, one good deed brings on another good deed, one evil deed brings on another evil deed. It's one of the reasons why we bring a sacrifice when we sin, to break the, the, the flow and turn that negativity into a positive and then turn it in a different direction. So how does a person achieve success? So one easy way is have to real, have realistic goals. Um, you know, I had a friend I used to play racquetball with. And unless I uh, left the court, there was no way he was ever going to win. He would have to do it when my back was turned. And he was very aggravated all the time. And he would leave dejected. And I said to him, you're really coming, approaching the problem the wrong way. What you need to do is score three points. You need to come into this court and figure you're going to score three points. And if you score three, you won. Because that was a realistic goal. What if you scored four? Wow. And all of a sudden, instead of walking off angry and, and totally dejected and your whole night's a wreck, you walk away with three points feeling good about yourself because everything has to be realistic. Just, yet a person has to know what his realistic goals are and what his abilities are. On the other hand, a person also has to know that you can go further than what you usually do and a person needs to push. Now, if you take a realistic goal and at the same time push a little bit harder and find again that you're scoring four points or five, it's time to make a party, even though in reality you didn't win the game. But you did win according to what your ability was. And that becomes the key. And that puts your whole frame of mind and your whole persona in a different place. It's interesting. Life is a battle. Um, people go to see, whether you're in a participant or just a spectator, it's a battle. Whether you watch an event or you play the event. Your team wins, you feel good. Your team loses, you feel bad. So life is that battle. But you need to be in the battle in a way that allows you to always come out a winner. You know, you learn nothing from success. You learn a whole lot from failure. I quote the verse all the time. Good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. If you take those negatives or supposed negatives in life and learn from them, are they negative? Or do you really gain something so that you're... It's interesting. I always say, if I tell you to jump as high as you can, what's the first thing you're going to do? And people will say, I'm going to jump. And I say, no, you're not going to jump. The first thing you're going to do if I tell you to jump as high as you can is to bend down. And I'm going to say to you, I just told you to jump. Why would you bend down? It's going in the opposite direction. And the answer is because the lower you crouch, the lower you get down, the higher you'll jump. So that negative becomes a positive. So success many times can be even that step back that makes you, propels you two steps forward. We call in Hebrew, you read it for an aliyah, a descent for an elevation. Very important. This is a world of action. It's called the world of Asiya. And it's interesting it's actually a mitzvah. The Torah actually commands us, Sheshisham im tavod, six days you should work. Work is a mitzvah. Not only that, it's a blessing. Busy people are happy people. Regardless of what they do, as long as they enjoy what they do, 
And it's not for us to decide what should be enjoyable for someone else. The key becomes is for a person to involve himself with whatever he does. Be a participant. Be, be active. Don't watch on the sidelines. Get involved. Break out in the sweat. Because when you become part of the game, the game becomes enjoyable. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes you'll say to you'll talk to someone and they'll say, boy, time flies. And whenever someone tells me that, I always say to the person, life's good. Because I can promise you, when you're having trouble, that clock doesn't move. You know, there's a saying that says that uh, people seem to think that time goes slower for children and when you get older, time moves much quicker. That's really a fallacy. Go to the average child and ask him during summer break, did it go slowly or was it quick? And he'll tell you it went by like a blink of an eye. What goes by slowly is the school year because he's being tested and he may be in places he has to get up early, do this, that, and the other things he may not want to do. But when a person is involved with what they want to do, enjoying themselves, time flies. It's a great sign. So when you feel that your life is moving quickly, it's really a sign of success. You know, again, we need to strive to reach our potential. A story told of Rav Zusha, who's a great tzaddik and righteous individual. On his deathbed, he was crying, and his students asked him, Rabbi, why are you crying? And he says, I'm not crying because on the day of judgment, they're going to ask me, why wasn't I like Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu? I'm crying because they're going to ask me, why wasn't I like Zusha? That we all have a mission in life, and that success becomes fulfilling that mission. You know, it says in the uh, Shema Yisrael, second paragraph, the Asafta de Ganecha, it's interesting, the second paragraph is plural, but this verse is singular. The Asafta Ganecha, and you shall gather your grain, the Siroshka Yitzarech, and your wine and your oil. Singular. And this is a blessing. The blessing here is success. Sow and reap. That you put effort in, and then you see the benefit of that, the fruit of your labors. It's interesting. Then the next verse says, And I will give grass in the field for your animal. And that is God's gift. That the animal did nothing, nor did you. The grass grows by itself. And that's a gift from God. And then the last words of that say, You'll eat and be sated. Contentment. So when a person has the, the blessing of sowing and reaping, of feeling the reward of his efforts and then the blessing of God even with things he didn't do and then that feeling of contentment but it's interesting then what does it say it says Yishamer lechem lechem. guard yourself at least your heart will turn and you'll start to serve other gods what's the other god you start to believe in yourself so much that you think that you're a self-made man who worships his creator you think it all comes from you and once you start to do that, then everything falls apart. So a person needs to know that success is God's. I used to, I used to play racquetball, and we all do it. Um, I'd aim for the left-hand corner, and I'd miss hit the ball and then go into the right-hand corner. And my opponent also thought I was going to the left, so it was a great shot. And I'd win the point, even though it would be a miss hit something I wasn't trying to do. And I always say, thanks, God. And then I started to think to myself, so when I aim for the left-hand corner and it goes into the left, that means I don't thank God for that? You thank God for whatever it is because everything, all successes come from God. And that becomes the key. So what we have is effort. If everyone's looking for a, a tip, a stock tip, something that will always pay dividends. And that is any effort that you put in any project to serve God, to be a better person, to, to be find successful in this world, will never be turned away empty. God will pay each person for all the effort he puts in. As far as will he be successful in, in, in monetary gains, in adoration, maybe not. But he will have that reward from God for the effort that he put in. Because God's not going to pay you for effort, for, for, for the, what you did. He decides success is his. But he will pay you for the effort. And it's interesting. We want to dictate to God as to how we should be successful. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. 
God tests us, God puts us in this world for us to grow. He knows what we need to do. We may not want to. It's like a trainer. The trainer pushes you to go further than you want to go. That's why we work out with the trainer, because we're very kind to ourselves. There's an interesting blessing, probably one of the greatest blessings that we have, that we give, many people give to their sons on Friday night. Now the blessing we give to a girl is that you should be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. We bless a young lady that she should be like the mothers of Israel, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, which makes sense. Great women. So the blessing for a boy should automatically be, you should be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fathers of our nation. That's not the blessing. The blessing's not even their sons. The blessings are the grandchildren of Yaakov, the sons of Yosef, Ephraim and Manasseh. The question is why? And the answer is that these two young men were born outside of Israel. They were born in Egypt, in the most licentious, immoral country in the world. And their father was the viceroy, the second most powerful man in the world. In fact, some people say that the whole reason why Yosef was sold into Egypt was a philosophical debate between the brothers and Yosef. Can a Jew be a Jew, a religious Jew, outside of Israel? Or is, or is his religiosity connected to the land? Does he have to be in Israel to be religious? Are they one and the same? Brothers said yes. Yosef said no. A Jew can be a Jew anywhere. And he can serve God anywhere in the world. True, Israel may be the palace of the king, but anywhere in the world. So the brothers said, Pro good, prove it. And they sold him to Egypt. And what did he do? He proved it as a slave. He proved it as a prisoner. He proved it as the viceroy, the second most powerful man in the country. And he brought up two sons that not only were they successful, but even though their father was the second most powerful man in the world, what they did was they were religious. They became the tribes of Israel, something that was impossible to do. What they did was not reach their potential. What they did was exceed their potential. To become so righteous in an immoral society with a silver spoon in their mouth, to be able to do something they should not have been able to do, but they did it. So our blessing to a boy is not just to be like the forefathers, but to be like Ephraim and Manasseh, two young men who grew up in what should have been a negative surrounding, and they exceeded their potential. They did something they should not have been able to do. In fact, the numerical value of Ephraim and Manasseh is one more than Ruvain and Shimon. That's what they were able to do. And they were the example for us. So the key becomes that for us to find success, we have to know that what God gives us, where God puts us, we need to find our challenge and our success in what's given to us and turn that into, you know, as it says, if you have lemons, make lemonade. You know, you can moan and groan about what it is or you can turn it into something that's, that's positive. To many people, success really is money. And um, I'm going to run out of time here, so I think next week what we'll continue on is success, not based on what a person does necessarily, but how does money and success, is success, financial success, a blessing or a curse? Does it come from God or does it come from the devil? Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a great Shabbos.